It's all about passion, it's all about change It's all inclusive, every day of the week When the world comes together, united as one Sharing stories through the eyes of him view TV Hello! Welcome, welcome, welcome to the season finale of What Matters for 2020. Woo-hoo, what a year it's been. Thank you, everyone who's followed us throughout the year, who's listened to all our guest speakers. Um, we're going to have a great night tonight. We started with an awesome gentleman uh, by the name of Thanos. A lot of you know him. A lot You'll of you him. love him and follow him. Um, and we're going to finish the season with him because, you know, he kicked us off with a great start and we eager to catch back up with him at the end of this um, season and find out what has been happening in the days of our lives of Thanos down in Melbourne. (laughs) Absolutely. So, guys, look, if you are tuning in, uh, go ahead and create a little watch party, share this live, share this with your friends, with your tribe. We've got an amazing show. We are streaming live from Inview TV to Ovoplay to Facebook um, and YouTube. And YouTube. So, um, yeah, go ahead and do that. Uh, we've got about probably, we've got a, a really cool showreel coming up of Thanos really, really soon. But look, before we do get started, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land and where we gather and pay respect to the elders past, present and emerging of all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander nations. I am Jojo and this is my beautiful wife, Jess. And I'm Jess. And it's so ex- so grateful, like Jess said, um, to have you guys here. And thank you to everyone who has supported us uh, this year. And uh, it's been a big year. It's been a really, really big year. Uh, I know we've all felt it. Uh, I don't know about you. It's almost Christmas. Yeah. It's almost my birthday. Uh, and I'm ready to go out with a bang and uh, kind of hopefully put 2020 as one of those years that happened that shouldn't have happened but maybe a year that needed to happen for us to i guess potentially wake up and kind of see uh the lies the corruption whatever way you see it but you know know that there's a lot of things that are happening that just don't make sense. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Look, let's not waste any time because we've got an awesome show lined up and we, I want to get into it. So let's kick in. Yeah. So we got Thanos. You know what? It's been a big year. He's been arrested. He's been silenced. Um, you know, he's been speaking his truth. And uh, uh, let's get him on. Let's see what's happening with Thanos. So, guys, yeah, without further ado, Grab a glass, fill it up, and let's get in and let's welcome on Thanos. I came home from work one day and I sat on the couch and I said, you know, I won't say the swear word, but I said, um, (laughs) what can I do? I'm I'm just one man, right? And this voice inside me said, um, just make videos, just keep talking and people will listen. Then you get to the point that you're getting arrested and warrants at the door and you know um, bail conditions where you can't even go into the city right Um, and now we're here so ask yourself whether we have government corruption in this country let's look at pedophilia for a second it's one of the most heinous acts you could do to a to a human being you destroy and demoralize someone for, for life you debilitate them as a person where they can't even function in society right now, this is what I didn't understand when I was arrested. I said, okay, so you're telling me that me going out and speaking out against, um, you know, the lies and the government corruption could be seen as a criminal act. But you're telling me there are 28 names sitting on a list that have been proven to have had some type of involvement with childhood pedophilia and these people at the, the upper echelons of every single government structure we can think of They're at the top of every judicial system we can think of. And not only did these people not get suspended pending an investigation, they said, we don't want to handle this because the uh, people would lose faith in the judicial system. And they should have all been locked up. So this isn't a conspiracy, right? We're talking about Senator Heffernan. We're talking about a senator in the Senate addressing this stuff. 
No mainstream media will touch it. If any mainstream media he is here today, you're a bunch of sellouts. Your job is to inform, not to indoctrinate. So let's talk about vaccines for a second. Now that we've, uh, you know, we have determined that government corruption does exact, does in fact exist in Australia. So I decided to have a look at the uh, Moderna vaccine. We go and have a look at the history of Moderna. In 2017, they attempted to do an, RM an mRNA vaccine, right, which was so, uh, which failed so dramatically that they had to stop the testing with animals and they couldn't even go into humans. That's how dangerous this mRNA stuff is. The CDC has admitted that no mRNA vaccine has ever been successfully created and licensed in the United States. But the CDC is happy to turn around and say, well, yes, we do know that, but, you know, uh, mRNA is just a harmless process. You know, when you start really researching and looking into this stuff, you go, okay, so you're telling me we've got a vaccine that's totally experimental in, it, in an essence of being implemented onto a person ever. You've got... Uh, eight months that you've been developing it and now you are ready to unleash it onto a population when you absolutely have no long-term testing at all. And the government's like, yep, let's do it. You should have the choice whether you put something in your body or something in your kid's body. And if you do want to put something in my kid's body or my family's body, you better not be asking for no liability. Please tell me why we can have something that could be put into your body that could completely debilitate you for life and, you know, that's fine, we won't give them liability. I would suggest you get your phone out now because this is a message for every person in the world. In the beginning, they said this is a precaution. Then they said we need two weeks and we'll flatten the curve. Then it was four weeks, three months, six months. Then they announced we won't go back to normal, but a COVID normal. Now they say we cannot go back to normal unless we get a vaccine. Now they say we won't be able to travel without a COVID passport or a certificate of vaccination. Australia, the time for ignorance towards what is currently our accepted reality must stop. The time to stand quietly by while our way of life is destined to be a distant memory of regret has come to an end. How much longer will we watch these, these governments and corporations dictate the terms of our lives? How long will we take this onslaught of our rights and liberties being taken away? When did the government and these corporations decide they hold the ultimate power? We are witnessing the death of privacy, human rights, and the way of life of a free democratic society. And we are witnessing the birth of egregious surveillance on innocent people, monitoring via artificial intelligence, microchips and biometric passports being, in, being implemented into the people of this country. Is this really the world you want for your children? A world, a world where your children are marked, tracked, traced and monitored like cattle? No. For years we have watched these corporations, globalists and socialists, dry up our riverbeds, sell the resources of our country off to the highest bidder, while the farmers that have been their generations watch their legacy turn to dust. A cancer of deception, greed, secrecy, lies, Hypocrisy, double standards and self-interest. This world is under siege, is under attack. Not with bullets, not with bombs, but with the media and government's onslaught of lies. Information censorship through social media upload hosts such as YouTube. Unprecedented world debt which will never pay back. And the threat of a possible genetically modifying vaccine through big pharma cartels that face no liability for their so-called treatments that are experimental at best, while they stand to profit billions. That our government should serve the needs of the people, not the needs of the corporations, not the needs of the highest bidder. But now let's get to the positive bit. This is not the end. This is just the beginning, the beginning of unity, the beginning of strength, of courage, determination and compassion for our fellow mankind. Australia, the time to stand is here. Stand strong, stand proud, stand as the sovereign people of this nation and above all else, stand free. Australia, stand up and be free. What a speech, Vanos. What a speech. And welcome back to What Matters. How are you? 
Hey girls, how are we? Thank you so much for having me back. Thank you so much. Yes, um, the speech was definitely one of ones. There was no swearing. <laughs> <laughs> well, watching the speech, you know, it reminds us of why we do the show and how important it is to use yeah. our voices and to speak up. And I know since we seen you last, you have been on a bit of a journey, you've been arrested, you've um, been silenced, but let's go back. I, you came on in, in March, in April, August. I can't even get the months right anymore. It's been one big blur of a year. I don't remember either. <laughs> August. Oh, August. Oh, thanks, Bruce. Thanks, thanks Bruce. <laughs> So run us through that, you know, I guess um, what are some, you know, the highlights that, you know, that you're proud um, to talk about that, you know, that, that make you proud of, of what you've been able to achieve this year, Fanos. Please share some of that with us. Yeah, I, I believe I'd have to say that some of the highlights would have to be, there's an echo in the background, guys. Oh, it's gone. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'd have to say that some of the highlights are people that have been approaching me on the street and just shaking my hand and telling me um, what an amazing job I've been doing because, you know, on online you get a lot of trolls, but out there mostly all I get is uh, praises, thank yous and handshakes. And um, Look, some of the highlights I'd have to say is uh, meeting amazing people, connecting with a lot of people. I've, I've definitely grown a lot. I've learnt a lot. You know, speaking in Sydney was was amazing to finally actually be up there. Um, there's been a few things, you know, even, you know, the whole 60 minutes things and stuff like that. People try and get on that stuff for years, you know, and I had these guys hassling me for weeks just to get me on, you know. So I would have to say that a lot of, a lot of the things that have been highlights in my life have been, especially this year, have been just allowing faith to, you know, be my driving force and not questioning whether or not I should I should be going down the road because whether it's financially viable or not or whether I'm going to be able to survive or not or whether I'm going to be endangering myself or not and just, you know, walking with faith and just going, you know. So mm. I think the biggest highlight of this um, year has been the, the, the validity of just how important it is sometimes to just follow gut if i was going to say it all that would definitely you know well it's not tv it's not following it's it's not the following it's not um you know all of these amazing all of these amazing people we've been connected with have been great but the biggest highlight i would have to say is you can achieve a lot just by trusting your intuition and your gut and not questioning it and just going with the flow achieve so much by speaking the truth which a lot of people struggle with because they are like very scared to get ridiculed um and to get um you know trolled on the media you know that's why no one wants to speak up about this but you know what that one person like you said in your speech if they can get up there speak their truth to let other people know it's okay like we we need to have an opinion and we need to not have that opinion yes. silent and sense it anymore so i'm really very very proud of you for doing that and the journey and the movement that you've created just by getting out there and speaking the truth thanks guys i appreciate that thank you yeah and i guess um so yeah you were down in sydney um i i guess even what we spoke about in august we we spoke about potentially mandatory vaccinations Mm. Those things are now unfolding. Yep. We know that we are, are yep. not going to be able to travel without um, getting vaccinated. Um, potentially, you know, I know in mm -hmm. WA they've said no jab, no play. So they're really bringing that. So these are the things that you have been speaking about, mm. I guess, in terms of where yeah. we are now and where where we're going to go in 2021. Um, I guess what's what what else you know? What are your views on yeah. where we're heading to? Where where are we going? <laughs> my views my views on two thousand and twenty one are to maintain the that everyone's to be vaccinated, and you know you look at all the all all of these you know uh, red flags that are coming up like you know ninety nine percent recovery rate, everything to do with any other treatment is banned off the internet within seconds, right? Yeah. Not even investigated. Um, 
Then you've got the fact that people are dying during these vaccine trials, copying serious, um, you know, systemic probably with them for life. And yet the yeah. government's still just going, yep, yeah, let's vaccinate everybody. There's something seriously sinister going on and it's not, it makes no sense whatsoever what they're doing, you know. Mm. So 2021, I believe that, you know, I believe a virus will be back because yeah. Yeah. this has never been about a virus. It's been about sticking yeah. people with a vaccine for some reason. So what the hell is in the vaccine is what I want to know, not what they're telling us, what they're not telling us. Mm. Yeah, exactly. You're exactly right. And we know now from, um, you know, recent regulations that have been um, passing and about um, children must have all their vaccines up to scratch before they can go back to school. Um, if we want to fly Qantas, I know all the a few other airlines are jumping on board with this as well. You need to have your um, COVID vaccine before you're allowed to travel with these airlines. Yep. Like it, it is mandating us itself and it's going to have us gridlock um, to a point where we're not going to have a choice anymore. And this mm. is why it's important to speak up and remind the government that you know we are the people you're supposed to be answering to us not the other way around mm. um and the, the importance of that is if we don't get up and do anything about it now what with uh, you and many other people have been trying to um do this year is um enlighten people educate people about what is coming what is going to happen happen um if we don't get up and do anything about it unfortunately guess what we could we we could lose and we could have to forfeit um uh, you know mm. compromise our health like you say with all the stuff that's in the vaccines that's what if what we're doing was we're compromising our house health to mandate a vaccine for seven billion people mm. if you want to say it that way look as you said it's never been about the vaccine so yeah. what is it about <laughs> no i said it's i said it's never been about the virus it's always but it, it's it seems to be it's always been about the the um the you know problem reaction solution so the the virus is the problem it's the solution that they're focused on which is the a, a vaccine you know um and i think the whole thing virus and the vaccine is you know they want to demonize anyone who doesn't want to take it you know they want to make life so uncomfortable and so um uh how do i explain this they want to make it so uncomfortable to to be in that environment where you you know, now they're talking about the fact that, you know, this you're a net vaccine, but you'll still need to wear a mask and you'll still need to social distance. So you're telling me that the vaccine doesn't do what it needs to do. Why the hell are you making people take it? It doesn't stop you. It, they can't guarantee it stops it from spreading. They can't guarantee that it will stop you um, from, from catching it. So if the case, why the hell are you taking it? Uh, isn't that like me not having a vaccine at all where I can't guarantee that I won't catch it and I can't guarantee that I won't spread it? What the hell is the difference, right? Yeah. So they're trying to create this culture where, you know, they're going to demonise anyone who doesn't want to take a vaccine. They're going to demonise anyone who doesn't want to wear a mask and follow the narrative. And they've already started this process, right? You can't fly on a plane. I was flying um, a Virgin uh, Tiger Airways when I came up here and the guy came up to me and he goes, so I'm going to need to ask you to put your mask on. I go, listen, mate, I'm going to put it up to my mouth and I'm not going to cover my nose. I go, why? Because I've read everything there is to know about masks. The government has no absolute evidence for mask wearing. The World Health Organization has no evidence for mask wearing. This thing's an absolute joke. If anything, a cloth mask increases your risk of influenza-like illnesses. I go, so I'm sorry, I'm not going to put this thing on because you people don't know what the hell you're talking about. So I'm going to come to a company and I put it up to my just above my mouth and I'm not covering my nose. And I don't care what you do, I'm not going above my nose with it. Right? This thing's ridiculous. Everything mm. they're doing is not based on science. Everything they're telling people to do, they've got no evidence behind it. Right? And if you actually do some digging, you find, well, hang on, yeah, you guys have no evidence. So like, just so you know, just about masks, right? Here's an interesting fact about masks. The mask situation... Can you just tell Bruce there's an echo for some reason? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the whole mask situation, the whole mask situations, the cloth masks. You know the evidence that they had for cloth masks was from a uh, from a, a study that wasn't a clinical trial, uh, uh, an observational study of a hair salon where two females were serving over 160 people with cloth masks and no one got sick. That's where they got their evidence from. 
that that cloth masks are effective with COVID. I'm not joking. This is serious. A non-controlled environment, right? They have no evidence whatsoever. You know I mean? So when you actually go do some digging, they've got no evidence. And this is what pisses me off about all of this stuff, that people are being demonised and being and, and really being, you know, um, villainised out there for not following the rules when the rules have no evidence why we have to do it. Not backed by science. And where, um, where are these no, expert not. recommendations coming from? Yeah, show me your experts. Who are they? Exactly. You know, show me these experts. I did... I did a YouTube video um, not too long ago, um, which does, uh, I did a mask expose because Dan Andrews said that, you know, conspiracy theorist views have no basis in science, fact or law. So I took the mask mandate of Victoria and I saw if it had basis in science and fact, had none. And I, you know, this was pretty involved. This, this video was so well put together, I haven't had one troll go onto that page and comment because they got no leg to stand on. No basis in science. Everything's assumptions, assertions, and guesswork. They actually have no evidence whatsoever, right? And not, but no basis in law whatsoever. So they're being asked. We are being asked to do with masks. Has no, no evidence in science, fact, and nothing to do with the law at all, right? So exactly. it's an absolute joke what we're being what we're being asked to do because there's no evidence. I'm just sick of the bullshit, to be honest. She's my yes, lady. <laughs> you and many of us as well, Fanos. You know, we're all sick of it. We're sick of it, you know, um, hindering our life. We can't progress because we've just got all these restrictions pouring down um, from yeah. the yeah. system or the government or the global system, whatever you want to call it. But it's from the elites. It's it's not from the people. So um, I, I understand that you have read the um, Agenda 21 or Agenda 2030 documents. Mm. Do you want to elaborate a bit more on that and tell people what it is actually about and the conditioning uh, behind it and why uh, COVID and what's happening today is and how relevant it all, and yeah. how it all folds together? Yeah. Yeah, so I've, I've read the Agenda 21 document up until Chapter 15, right? And you don't need to read any more than that to know what they're trying to do with it. The Agenda 21 uh, document is basically a worldwide legal, uh, a, a worldwide uh, framework of policies and leads that regulate everything. Water use, um, you know, use of private land. Now, they're very smart. They say this comes through this, you know, this Trojan horse of sustainability and, you know, let's help the planet. But then you see words like population control, human settlements, removing people off private land because of biodiversity. So they're saying, oh, well, the, you can't have this land anymore to uh, grow your farm on and you can't have this land anymore to fish on and you can't have this land anymore to build a property on because of the th fact that you're, you might be destroying the ecosystem. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove all this private land use and put everyone in these giant mega cities. We're all stacked on top of each other, you know, and they're, they're like 20 stories high, and you can fit, you know, uh, 20,000 people in a building, right? Because that's sustainable. Because living out in the wilderness like we've been doing all this time isn't sustainable anymore. And everything comes through this umbrella of let's help the environment, but it's it's all about, you know, all of the world getting together and creating a, a policy around everything you can think of. And, you know, when the government says policy, and they say, oh, we're just creating a policy for water use, you know that there's a lot more to it than just protecting the environment. Does that mean that now I can't harvest my own water off my land and now I can't fish out of the water? Does that mean – and you start asking yourself all these questions and you can really see just how sinister the Agenda 21 is, right? Talking about, you know, um, population control. They're talking about, you know, indoctrinating uh, the mother – in order to, um, you know, in order to ch shift the family dynamic so that they think more about sustainability and all this other stuff. But you read it and, and the way they say it, it's like uh, population control for the, sustainable future, for the for sustainability of the environment, taking into consideration, um, you, know, uh, you know, indigenous and people of the land and, you know, uh, women's rights, whatever it says. But it says it's, it's this... 
fluffy, beautiful sentence, but at the beginning it says population control. At the beginning it says human settlements. At the beginning it says out of private land ownership. So the, the government's basically telling you now what you're going to be able to do with your land even more than it already was, but now it won't be a local council, it will be a world council, a worldwide framework on how everyone's expected to from one controlling interest, which is the United Nations. Yeah. It is freaking disturbing. It, no is, it is disturbing. No private land ownership, nothing. Yeah, and, and it, that is very disturbing. Like I've, I've read a few um, stuff on Agenda 21 myself and my understanding is they want to achieve a one world governance, which basically they already do using the yep. UN and all of that, um, um, a one world religion, um, which if, I don't yep. know if you've yep. in, seen what's been happening in the religious side of things, um, also a one world mm -hmm. internet governance and a one world food chain. Those were the four big way, um, things that highlighted for me when I started um, researching this. And off, if you take one of those and you branch down under, because it just opens up into more layers and more layers as, as you research deeper into these four things, um, mm. say for your food, yeah. for example, um, if you're a farmer and you want to grow uh, tomatoes or you want to grow um, um, whatever on your farm, you have to get that seed from the One World Food Chain, which the biggest provider is um, what are the, uh, Monsanto. I, uh, um, and if you aren't growing that, then you cannot yep. sell it. Yep. Um, and I'm sorry, but yeah, you basically they own your food. Mm. Whether you're the grower, you're the farmer or whatever, they own it because that seed came from them and all the rules yeah. and regulations yeah. are changing so that it does come from them. Mm. Yeah, so that's when you, you're talking about, you know, when you talk about GMO, basically mm. what you need to know is that um, it's basically a, a, a patent, right? It, it's a painted, it's a patented product, so it's intellectual property. So when you grow that farmer's, when you grow that, when the farmer grows that seed, they cannot use that same seed to grow next year's crop. They mm. need to go back to the back to the same company. And use a different seed. If they're found using the seed the year before, they can actually be sued for using their intellectual property. So basically, food goes from being something that we should just be able to freely grow to being genetically mm. modified, but now it's owned. And you can't just plant a seed and grow it. Exactly. Mm. This is a dangerous and, and thing about G this is a dangerous thing about GMO. And, and, and what's even worse is a lot of those farmers have to use those seeds and unfortunately those seeds aren't allowing them to grow crops. So they're not actually being able to grow resources and actually provide and, and, and build their business. So mm. um, it's... it's you know, as if our farmers haven't already copped enough, um, this is just going to be another added hurdle um, to any, you know, farmers out there, any families who have farmed their whole lives. Um, and I've heard from even New Zealand, we're doing the same over there in New Zealand, I'm from New Zealand, um, the same sort of um, bio laws um, are changing over there um, to accommodate Agenda 21, yes. all these laws that are changed. Or actually, I think I lost count after 20 something laws had changed um, in New Zealand this year, um, or bills, or um, and they are all accommodating Agenda 21, which is why I, I I see the picture clearly and mm. unfortunately it's not about sustainable living at all. It's about control. Yeah. It, that's the number one thing. It's about control. Yeah. Let's talk and, about sustainable yeah. living, right? Let's really talk <laughs> about sustainable living. If life was really about being sustainable and if it was really about creating prosperity in society, you really get taught as part of as part of your life how to grow food. And how to actually mm. use your your Everyone should actually have a block, a, you know, a plot of land in their house that's, that's by law that you need to have one and you need to actually grow your own food. Because what would be more sustainable than people actually growing their own food and knowing how to be able to get the most out of the ground where they live, right? If it was really about sustainability years ago, they would have stopped using fossil fuels and they would have started looking at, you know, uh, solar power and all that stuff years ago. Right, they, and, and they teach people how to become self-sufficient, 
how to not use so much energy by create by you know being being able to use energy sources that don't uh, rely on um, you know fossil fuels or power being generated from a power plant, but they don't, right? And the whole thing about that Agenda Twenty One is they make it like we're the problem, we're using too much energy. And everyone just was able to create have self sufficient power to seventy percent of their power needs by having mm. a wind turbine one on their roof, a solar panel, right? There's so many people out there that have created amazing inventions. And what happens to them? A guy creates a, a car that runs on water, right? He's all over the news, so you know it's not bullshit. You know it's not bull, right? You know he's created it. And then he disappears off the face of the earth. No one's ever heard from him again. So you're exactly. telling me this guy that was on the news that had a serious invention that creates – you know, a car that runs on water. How come that's? How come those these inventions never see the light of day? You know, you go back into the 1900s. Nikolai Tesla discovered that the, the the atmosphere is saturated with electricity, and he figured out a way to send electricity wirelessly. He had a wireless vehicle that was working in the 1900s, but there's no money on free energy. These people don't care about us. They couldn't give two rats about your family. They want to. Stay, they want to. They want to fill you with chemicals. They want to keep you dumb. They want to keep you earning just enough money to go on one holiday a year and then work the other forty-eight hours, forty-eight, uh, forty-eight weeks of the year, right? And they want. They want to keep you watching TV, not being a free, free thinker, and you know, not being, not being able to, you know, survive on your own. So many people, it's actually against the law in the United States to live off the grid and be switched off everything. You need to actually have um, connected to electricity or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Wow. So these guys say they want to create a sustainable future, but they're the ones that are, you know, putting nuclear waste in, into, our, into, our, um, into our seas, you know, destroying all, all, of our, all of our rivers by selling off, you know, our, our, our water, use, right, water usage, to all of these big corporations that have all the money. All of these billionaires sit there, they want to fix the planet. If the billionaires want to fix the planet, they should just seriously just piss off. Go to go to another part of the world where they can do whatever they want and let people just live. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that was exactly. my rant. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. I feel I, I'm, my views are exactly the same and you know and that's why I'd rather you talk because then I get hyped up and angry about it <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe probably inform every now and then. And but then I sit over here start freaking out, going, oh, my God, where are we going with this world? Where are we going to be this time next year? <laughs> what are we going to do, babe? We need to build a bunker. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. way. We need to keep educating so our true. people so that they can critically think for themselves, they can read this information for themselves and make their own decisions. And, and honestly, to be honest, once you start – doing your own research and you're looking in all the right places, it is clear as day yeah. what is happening. There is no argument about it. It is clear as day. It is no. nothing about, you know, preventing world poverty and sustainable living. It, and climate that's, change. that's just the bullshit. They've been bullshit. working on climate change since global warming and then they realised they couldn't get far with that and then they thought, well, climate change, mate, the ch climate change is every day. The world's been around for hundreds of thousands of years. Mm. Trust me, if we're, if we're messing up this mm. earth, Mother Earth will sort us out and she will shift us away. Yep. <laughs> she will shift us away. But to me, it's just sure. a gimmick to get more money, to, to use, use that same spiel like they've used COVID to change regulations, health regulations and laws. Mm. It's the same thing with corporations changing yep. regulations, yep. implementing new laws, using the excuse of climate change. When you start when you start doing your research on that, well, that unravels a whole heap of another <laughs> bullshit, doesn't it? So it's like you could go on and on into depth throughout all these different, um, uh, what do you call it, organisations or that, that's agendas, different mm. agendas out there. Um, and... It's just overwhelming what you see. Um, what was that one thing we wanted to expand us to before? I don't know, but I did. We did read an article the other day from one of the fake news giants um, about mm -hmm. oh, that the people, majority of the people, are voting for a uh, a wage. What was it? You read it. You showed it to me. Oh, a uni universal. Um, yeah, yeah, right. Uh, I like the, like the world's like actually all these people. Yeah, yeah like, universal you know, wage. 
wait. That was the other thing. I'm going, oh, here we go. Now, here's the next step to the agenda because I did hear about <laughs> them bringing us all back down to one social living standard where we all earn the same. We all, you know, basically stopping anyone else from thriving outside of their, <laughs> their system. But, yeah, that started popping up in the news. Yeah, yeah, isn't it funny how they say, oh, you know, all these, I'd like, like to know all of these people who are, you know, actually saying that stuff. And I'd like to see them know that are these people that are working their ass off 65 hours a week, 70 hours a week to create something in their lives? Or are these people who are too lazy to, to go and do, a, you know, 10 minutes of work and they just want to be able to get a universal wage, you know? And they use these words like um, social equality, right? That, you know, it's all about, you know, equality and social equality. It shouldn't be equality, right? You should get the fruits of your labor. If you work your ass off, then you should be rewarded for it. If you're a lazy mofo and you just can't be stuffed doing anything and you spend 10 hours in bed a day because you can't be stuffed getting up to actually do something, then you do not deserve the same fruits of your labor as the person who's waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning and devoting 23 hours of their day into, you know, into improvement and, and getting someone. The thing about, you know, social yeah. equality is the biggest joke I've ever heard. <laughs> you know, they're exactly. trying to get rid of private land ownership. They're trying to get everyone to earn the same wage. So the only people who are super rich are the, are the controlling interests. I don't even call them elite because I don't see them as elite. I see them as narcissistic scumbags who, in my eyes, all deserve to be locked up. Yeah. You want to you you make a change in the world? Cap, every single person can only have, the richest of the rich can only have up to $10 billion. You make any more than $10 billion, sorry, mate, it goes back in the pool. Yeah. You don't need any more than that. No. That yeah. would right? never happen. Yeah. That would never happen. Yeah. And see all the regulations. You want to really, really help the world? Ex yeah, let's, exactly. You know, let's, let's stop these guys earning so much money. <laughs> 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 yeah share it all with us that'd be wonderful yeah well look fanos you know we're gonna have to wrap it up but i just want to say you know thank you so much for coming back on i know you're a busy man you've had a busy year and mm. you know thank you for all that you've done and that you continue to do continue sharing speaking your truth yep. um and just keep on doing what you're doing and you know we look forward to catching up with you in 2021 and we hope that you know things will be brighter for us so i guess we'll just have to wait and see thank you so much jj thanks jess thank you for having me on thanks brother um and yeah thanks so much guys and hopefully i didn't rant on too much i've been um yeah it's been pretty full on this year and look let's hope that next year is a better year but, you know, if you ask me, it's, you know, there's there's more stuff coming and this is just the beginning of a long, long crazy road of street and just media bullcrap, to be honest. Oh, to, to be honest, like if we can have more alternate news and bring on people like yourself mm. and help educate the people, we'll, you know what, the people, us, we will educate our people. Never mind yeah. relying on these big corporations that, you know, provide us a whole heap of yeah. bullshit or half yeah. the story on the news. Hmm. We will we'll do the hard yards and we'll do it ourselves. Um, why? Because we're the ones who really care, to yeah. be honest. We're the ones who really care. Um, but you know what? Thank you, Fanos. Is there any last um, inspirational words you want to give our followers and our viewers before you um, clock off or the air on what matters? Yeah, I think if I'm going to say, if I was going to say anything, I'd say um, one thing I learned this year is follow your intuition, follow you, and always do what you believe is the right course of action. And if you only ever have, um, you know, if you only ever have good intent for what you're doing, you know, though it, you may, might think that, you know, an uncomfortable life is coming towards you, you just have to trust in the process and keep going. And next year is a year for people to really educate themselves down. Um, and it's, you know, there's a serious fight coming next year. They, they, they are, you know, the, the safety of your family is at risk, you know, and people really need to knuckle down and stick to their guns and not let the pressure of being socially accepted, you know, sway them from making the right decision because those vaccines and everything that's happening with that stuff is not safe and, and you know, there's serious sinister motives for what's coming on and 2021 is going to be a very, very interesting year.
Mm. It is going to be an interesting year. But you know what? We all want to pray for the best. We're going to stay in the light. We're going to rise, um, raise our vibrations um, so that we can, you know, prosper in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Great. Love it. Love it. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Fenos. Have a wonderful Christmas. And we'll Thanks, definitely yeah. catch up with you in the new year. Okay? Thanks, Fenos. Thank See you. Ya. God bless everyone. See you later. Bye-bye. See you. See you. Bless you. Bye-bye. Oh, what, oh. what a legend. What a legend. And what a year we have had here with What Matters, our first season. We have had an amazing lineup of guests this year. We yeah. started with Thanos. We wanted to end with Thanos. Uh, but more importantly, what we wanted to do is we wanted to end with bringing on our executive producer, Bruce Smott, he's the one, the man who makes everything happen. Um, he brings our show rules. Our show wouldn't be possible without Bruce. So I would love, we would love for you guys, hopefully stick around. Um, so we, um, as we bring Bruce on to the show, because uh, we don't get to see much of him. So here he is. Welcome, Bruce hey, Mott, our executive producer. Hello, Jojo, <laughs> Thank you Jess, for everything. How are you? Oh, great. Thank you for, um, you know, everything you do in the background. You know, if everyone doesn't know, Bruce is our producer in the background. He brings the camera in and out, makes us look good, dims the lighting, does the mics. He, you know, he's that guy. and um, Does everything. He does everything. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have a show. So thank you so much, Bruce. Thank you. Thank you. I don't think I quite do everything. There's um, two hosts that I have on the show that makes it all happen. So, um, yeah, <laughs> Joe, Joe and Jess. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, we've got to play our part. Thank you too. enough. <laughs> I thought um, Thanos tonight was just typical of the passion of the whole show, yeah. all our episodes. There's been 13 episodes you've had. Um, very passionate. The guests are very passionate about um, what they believe in and what they're talking about, and um, so are yourselves. And it really comes out in the shows. And and Thanos is tonight. I'm um, really highlighted that. Yeah. You know, and you know, I guess for us, we're so grateful, Bruce, that you've been able to give us a platform where we can have our views, that we can speak our truth, yeah, um, and not be censored. Yeah, yet. and we can bring on guests that have been censored and still give them a voice as well, and and that's quite important, especially in um, day and age like this, where every expert or whether you're a doctor, a scientist, or just an activist out there trying to spread your truth, uh, uh, where they are getting silenced right now. So mm. thank you for um, you know allowing us to have that platform so that these people can still be heard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very important, and um, I said to you from day one, we've got to be careful that we don't get censored. Not because we're doing anything <laughs> wrong. I mean, heaven forbid, all we're doing is speaking the truth. But yeah. that can yeah. be a dangerous commodity in, in today's day and age, unfortunately. So, but um, yeah, been great shows, um, great guests. I'll put a bit of a show reel together, which I want to bring up on the screen now. Um, it goes for a few minutes, but um, there was 13 episodes to cover, oh. about seven hours of footage. So I tried yeah. to shorten as much as I can, but there was so much good stuff that I needed to make sure that we captured all that. So if you're happy, we'll have a look at it. What do you think? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's awesome. recap on 2020 for what matters. Um, it's all about season. passion. It's all about change. It's all inclusive. Every day I Welcome to the very first episode of What Matters. Oh, I am God. Jojo. And I'm Jess. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. We've got a beautiful show ahead for you. Without further ado, I reckon let's uh, get the show rolling and let's bring on Thanos. I just saw a video. <laughs> Apparently, I am a, <laughs> what did he call me? <laughs> uh, a cabal plant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my god, that was a great video. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> I'm right, bringing on our guests, and before we do, I'd love to give Mandanara um, a welcome because Mandanara, she's someone that I've known for a really long time. 
She's the co-founder and managing director of The Black Card, who she's going to talk more about. And she's also the host and, and, uh, and founder of the Black Magic Woman podcast. She's doing amazing things in the corporate space uh, and, and really carrying on the traditions. Um, and I guess, you know, her family have been part of the Aboriginal movement since the 60s. Welcome, Mandana. We're so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. Which is acknowledging that I'm on Yagara country, which is south of the Matawai River. And the Matawai River um, was obviously renamed as the Brisbane River after Governor Brisbane. Really hits reality, um, really hits home when you say that. Um, yeah, so pretty much that's how it is at the moment. Lockdown home prison, 22 hours a day, um, one hour for shopping and one hour for walking. That's it. Yeah. Welcome to What Matters. We are back for another episode. I am Jojo. And I'm Jess. Oh, oh welcome. God. Welcome, Brother Leon. Thank you so I'm much sorry, for awesome. being here. A bit emotional watching that clip back because I know how much, you know, the, the mental health space affects in particular our Maori people, our Pacific Islander people. What a way to start the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thanks, Ray. I must say some of the facts that you're presenting um, are exactly that. They're facts. When it came to the curfew, we were all under the impression that it was a directive from the chief health officer and that but what we've found out is that it was not actually the idea of Brett Sutton. He doesn't really recall being consulted on it. Because I'd done a lot of research inadvertently, I'd studied the fraud of the vaccine industry for the past six years. I wrote a book on that uh, with doctors. It was brave doctors and scientists speaking out years ago about that. That led me to discovering uh, the fraud of that industry. So that gave me some insight that they'd done this before. There's been the AIDS scam where they inflated the deaths to, to basically take advantage of taxpayers and, and milk governments for all this money. Uh, they've done it before 1976, swine flu pandemic. Uh, let's, shall we bring on Amanda? Let's do it. Hi guys, I know a lot of you have probably noticed that I've been a little bit MIA in the last week and, and half um, because of the public uproar from the GoFundMe page that I created. I hope that this has created some clarity as to why I reached out and this has given you all a gist of what I personally have been through. I'm watching that video back just literally broke my heart because you know I know since your appearance on maths we've connected I followed your journey um, your fitness um, videos inspire me oh welcome Nick thank you so much for joining us tonight we're so excited for you to be here thank Aww. you thank you for having me thank you very much for having me and I'm quite impressed though Joe that you did your research into how uh how to pronounce my surname? I must say that's the first <laughs> first person who's got it right in a long time. So well done, good start. Oh wow, that was beautiful. Oh, I love that. I really love that last sentence that you put there. Um, you know, if you're living here, you have obligation to learn the history, and that's so true. It doesn't matter where you move in the world; you have the obligation to to learn the history of that country, especially here. And I mean, to, personally, I've been here for ten years, and I love your culture. It's beautiful, and there's so much more I want to learn about it. But welcome to the show. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to What Matters. I am Jojo. Hi, and I'm Jess, and we're your host for the next half an hour, bringing you news to the people, by the people, <laughs> for the people, for the people, <laughs> here on What Matters. Good to see that Melbourne has finally opened up. Uh, our guest tonight is Raphael Fernandez. He's a young 24-year-old guy from Melbourne. He says he's, a, he's an ordinary guy, you know, who likes to speak his truth the community. He's a bit of an entrepreneur, he's a coach, he uh, he's, he does uh, cryptocurrency. So right now you are actually banned from posting for a whole month. Um, I guess, you know, with everything that's been happening with all of the censorship, you know, we've had other guests that have come on and we've spoken about this, but why do you think you've been targeted? Oh my gosh, I've been targeted because I'm spreading the truth. Like we see that the posts it hardly gets to many people at all i start to see like lives i've done in the past with fanos dave and other people where my posts have been taken down and fact checked so the fact checkers have actually gone through the lengths 
to go and watch the videos that I've done live, right? And then they then they try and disprove and say, oh, you said this, oh, here's an article saying that what you said is wrong. So let's bring on Joel and get the conversation started. Yeah. Election day turns into election month. Pauline Hanson takes a swing at the Great Reset, and Scott Morrison considers a travel bubble with China. That's right. This is The Ark with Ricardo Bosi. Ricardo, welcome to the show again. <laughs> Thanks, Joel. Good to be here, as usual. I want to get this massive elephant out of the way. Welcome. <laughs> welcome, Joel. Thanks for coming here tonight. That was a great It's a pleasure to be here. Right? It's so... It's so weird watching myself on screen and, and, and being on this end of the interview. Yeah. <laughs> One gun. <laughs> we want truth and transparency with our politicians. We've had enough. We've had enough of people that we haven't elected making the rules and regulations for us. Christ will prevail. Thank you for joining us. How are you doing, guys? Well, Thanks for having me on. What an amazing video! Um, I felt I feel so inspired after watching that. You know, um, I'm I'm looking back on that day because I remember it clearly because we were there as well right. and just meeting so many amazing people. Oh, oh, oh my God! Thank you for that, Bruce. That was amazing. Wow! I can't believe how many amazing guests we've had on the season, and just watching it back, I'm like, that's right. Wow! We spoke about so much things, and you know, you did. so many yeah. things that were affecting our communities, our people. Um, Which is the very reason why we created what matters. You yeah. know, looking back, I, we've achieved what we wanted to for our first season. We've been able to address the conversations that mean a lot to us, conversations that are really important. Mm -hmm. You know, people might sit there and laugh at us, um, but, you know, here we are and we're staying true, um, you know, to, we're, we're being honest to our truth. Yeah. And I think it's so important, you know, why, you know, why we do what we do. Yeah. Um, and it would not be I mean, you can sit possible. there and laugh, but are you going to do it? No, probably not. Then shut up. You know, <laughs> because I, you know, I, I see these poor guys um, like Fennels and that they get ridiculed. We get ridiculed, and not that I, anyone else's opinion bothers me. I don't really give a shit anymore. Um, but the, I see them, and but they're they're out there doing the hard yards, man. They're they're out there putting their their body, whole careers on the line just to spread the message because the system will silence the truth. Mm. So you know, don't, don't stop giving these guys a hard time because they've done great. They've they've done amazing things, and a lot of those people that we interviewed this year they've been doing amazing things in the community they've been helping out so many different um, communities so many different people um, through what they do um, in their own personal work in their lives so um, I'm very very proud of all the guests that we've had on this year and you should yeah. be proud of yourselves as well I mean don't underestimate what you and what matters has achieved you talk about all these people putting themselves out there and risking certain things well yes yeah, so are you um, mm -hmm. to have this sort of show and get those sort of guests on to some people yeah that's um, a no-no and you can't be doing that thing to other people it's very much needed and I think right yeah. now that's at a stage where it's very much needed that's why these guests yeah. are welcome to come on the show and um, enjoyed coming on your show because um, all all trying to achieve the same thing and that's just um, get another message out there let people understand there's always two sides to a story and we need yeah. to see the other side Mm. Or as I say, sometimes there's three sides to the story. There's, you know, you're the side, there's it's my hers, side, and then there's the truth. The truth. <laughs> so I think sometimes, you know, the truth and sometimes even your intuition. For me, I, my intuition is a really big thing. And even when we go back to the beginning of this year when COVID did hit, um, I freaked out. I, you know, I succumbed to the media. I was like, oh, my God, I'd sprayed down my brother-in-law when he came home. And, and, and then just, you know, early on, my just things were like, this. things don't make sense. Mm. Things didn't add up. And I started listening and following experts and professionals and medical doctors and virologists, you know, and people, mm. um, you know, people that aren't paid by the social media 
giants. And so I am listening to experts who've got nothing to lose, nothing to gain, but a lot to lose. And mm. so I, I, I feel more inclined to follow them and to, um, you know, do more, read more into what they're telling me than people that are paid by the mainstream. And I think when you start to do your own research, you realize who own the the the, the big mainstream, the the mm. media, the giants, and who the big key players are, yeah. and 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 how they're influencing what's been happening this year. So I mean, you, you mentioned the you mentioned um, intuition. I think because there is so much information out there and there's so much um, valid information and so much misinfo misinformation, mm. I think, and it, it confuses a lot of people and we say, well, go research and it's like, well, where do I start? I mean, mm. there's so much yeah. rubbish out there and there's so much good stuff. I think when all else mm. fails, you've, you've got two decisions to make. You either follow your head or you follow your heart. Mm. You follow your heart. It's what the gut instinct, whatever else you want to call it, but at the end oh, yeah. of the day, that's the only two decisions you need to make. I'm going to follow my head based on research I have or have not done or yeah. shit, I don't know which way to go, so I'm just going to follow my heart. Yeah. Let's just follow your heart every time. Yep, that's the one. Uh, great advice, Bruce. Great All advice. All right, well, I'm going to let you finish the show. Thank you so much um, for a, a brilliant season. Can't wait to um, season 2021, see what that brings us on what matters and what 2021 brings us in life. I think we've got a few yeah. more challenges ahead of us. But, yeah, I think we do, and I think 2021 is going to be a big year. So, you know, throughout the Christmas and New Year break, I want you to take some time off for yourself and, you know, have a spa, have a few beers, um, chill out, because I think next have year when we come back, Brucey, <laughs> we've got a big job ahead of us. I do have a plan to <laughs> um, go plan. away where there's uh, no internet coverage, no phone, no Aww. nothing. So that's where I'm yeah. going for a few days. Thanks, girls. Cheers, Thanks for a great season. Thank, Thank you, Bruce. And you know what? Thank you to everyone who have joined and who have supported us um, and who kept us going. Um, mm. we, we wouldn't have done this without, you know, Bruce and the amazing guests that we have had on. And, you know, we've got a bigger season coming off for 2021. We can realise yeah. the fight is still young and it's still fresh. So we've got a long yep. road ahead of us. And, and hopefully, um, you know, the big giant corporations don't shut us out. Well, come on, we're the little guys. Leave us alone. <laughs> well, I think, you know, we, we use Facebook a lot, but I, I think in, in 2021 we're going to be really, um, and I'm going to be encouraging a lot of people to step away from those big platforms, Oops. Facebook, even YouTube, um, Instagram, Twitter. And I don't know if you've realised if you've even read their new uh, privacy settings lately. Uh, pretty much you have no privacy. Mm. So, yeah, probably now is a good time to move. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, look, guys, that's pretty much it, baby. Yeah, thank that's you it for, for us for 2020. Um, if you guys have any great guests you want to see on the show next year, you know what? Email them through. Yeah, um, we'll be happy to get them on. We'll be happy to interview them, um, and we'll be looking forward to it actually. But for now, guys, I hope you enjoy your Christmas break, yes. your New Year's. You enjoy, you know, the love you have with your family. You know, yes, we've had a tough year, and you know, if there's one thing that I wished more for this year was to spend more time with my loved ones. Mm -hmm. So if you've got that opportunity over the holidays, please take it. Please go and have that lunch. <laughs> yes, darling, you're with me every day. But I'm talking about the rest of my I tribe. Know. <laughs> <laughs> wish she can't go home right now and it breaks my heart so yeah. i guess yeah use this time use a christmas guys get off your phones now yeah. i'm done for the year no more posting i'm gonna be silent joe i'm be gonna try <laughs> live in the moment and just love your loved ones absolutely so guys merry christmas have a wonderful new year's and we will see you back in 2021 yeah Woo! see you now. guys Bye. It's all about passion, it's all about change, it's all inclusive every day I've